So, John. Yeah? Did you hear about the fisherman who became an Instagram influencer? No. His stories aren't great, but his reels are fantastic. (laughs) You're listening to the Lion Share Marketing Podcast. For marketing leaders, by marketing leaders. Brought to you by Fidelitas.co. All right, everybody, welcome to episode 126 of the Lion Share Marketing Podcast. We've got another great one lined up for you today, a rare repeat guest, but with good reason. Nate Lagos, the CMO at Original Grain, is coming on. They make some awesome watches if you've never seen them. But before we get to that, John, what's in the news? News team, assemble! Meta just introduced a new tool a new AI tool called Make a Video. And how it works is you can, uh, if, if you've been following any of the other AI tools recently where you can type in a text prompt, like a dog wearing a superhero outfit with a red cape flying through the sky or something like that, um, AI will not, those other tools that have been released uh, recently were just for uh, pictures. They're releasing a video product that will create a short uh, GIF of whatever your prompt is. Um, Some of the examples we've seen so far are pretty cool, but it's a way to enable someone who, you know, obviously if you wanted a a dog wearing a cape flying through the sky, that would be a very uh, expensive uh, video to shoot and it would take a lot of work and time. So to be able to type in a prompt and have something that might not look perfect yet as you know ai doesn't but is pretty darn close is uh, a cool tool to have and it'll be interesting to see how people uh start to uh use this tool yeah so first question john hot topic are you uh nervous for your job at this point um that is a great question and a lot of uh other designers or creatives get uh nervous when they see tools like this but i see it just like uh If they came out with a new paintbrush, would I be worried for my job? This is, I see this more as a tool, as a way for uh, us to work faster, better, but uh, all of the AI tools states that I've seen them, uh, it's not quite at the, it's at an amazing speed, but not quite at that quality level. And as anything, you could be given the best tools in the world, but it's really how you use them that matters. And so I think it's that, uh, coming up with those ideas and using them in, the, in an appropriate way. So um, I'm not worried for my job at all. I don't think a computer is coming to take it, but I do think this is a cool tool and I'm excited that it allows people like you, Tyler, with maybe less of a creative tool set, but great what ideas. You, you can type in Where whatever you want you and create it. <laughs> I, I'm create. I'm implying that you may, I may not want you on my illustration team. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you're going to need some kindergarten kindergarten style UGC. So, <laughs> I'm your but uh, no, you're you're exactly right, John. And I'll tell you, it's interesting. I actually saw one of the jobs that they project to come out of this will be an AI engineer who basically is uh, tasked with crafting the inputs in such a way for these AI programs to get the desired creatives out of it in a timely fashion. So I think it's it's interesting to see where things are going. I tend to agree with you. I think there will still be a need for uh, creatives at the end of the day. But uh, it's also crazy if you think about how far things have advanced in the last couple of years. Uh, and I know futurists have often said we're going to see more innovation in the next 10 years than in the last 100. Right. So it will be real interesting if this is where we are in year one or two of that prediction, where are we going to be in eight more? Right. And where some of these uh, technologies going to advance. But if you look at it the same day, we we see a lot of these emerging technologies come out. Right. Like like how long has drone delivery been around by now? Uh, And and I don't know about you, but I've never seen one drop a package off at my house yet. Um, So just because it exists, just because it's in beta, just because it has functionality and uh, and is even a somewhat proven concept that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be anything that is going to scale beyond uh, novelty and testing. Right. So we'll see, but given, given the necessity for, and here's where I think this is pertinent is Facebook knows that marketers running ads need a steady stream of new creative. 
And so what I think this allows, uh, really the people that I think, John, that are going to benefit most from this are small brands that have a one-person marketing team trying to wear all the hats and they don't have a big creative budget. And they're going to be able to test more creatives on a regular basis. Same for standalone media buyers that are operating as uh, freelancers, right? And they don't have a creative team in-house. It's going to allow them to scale more creative out uh, for their clients that they work with. You, you know, as an agency, I th- it'll be interesting. I'll, we'll see if how it tests. But I mean, John, would you be surprised at the end of the day if Facebook's programs creative tends to always test better than creative from any other source? Would that shock you? <laughs> yeah. And again, we'll we're see. probably a year away from this, right? Like yeah. this isn't tomorrow. But would you be surprised if that happened? Because I wouldn't. Uh, and, yeah. and it's. And that's why I think I'm so bullish. I know everyone's down on uh, Facebook. You know, we're recording this on uh, Halloween. Happy Halloween, by the way. Uh, but, y- y- you know, everyone's down on the Facebook stock right now and talking about, mm-hmm. you know, Meta's misplay into the metaverse and everything else. But they have so many other projects and so many other things in the hopper. I, I mean, they're going to become a one-stop shop for creative and for media buying in a way that no one else is beginning to touch. And, I mean, not to go too far down this rabbit hole, John, but we don't even know what they're trying to acquire that they haven't yet, right? And uh, right. as you know, the political winds shift both directions. And uh, when they swing yep. the other direction, it'll be more favorable for them to buy another company and they'll be more likely to pass antitrust muster. And so it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out in the coming years and how they uh, sort of sta- – and really, if you look at not just Facebook, but you look at Microsoft, Apple – uh, Google, you, and even what we're seeing TikTok do with their foray into buying 3PLs and building out a logistics operation in the U.S. I think if you want to see where things are going looking forward, just look at what they're buying. Look at what sort of jobs yep. are being posted, right? And that that's why I think the writing's on the wall. This is here to stay. It's just a matter of how effective is it really and right. uh, what skill sets are needed to make the most of it. So, uh, interesting times ahead for sure, John, and uh, certainly we'll be paying attention on our side uh, as as a media buying agency. And uh, again, when uh, it comes up for John's next performance review, and we're comparing his work to that of a robot, so it'll be it'll be great. I know John's super excited for that, and uh, I, I'm just excited to generate some more cat videos. I think the internet needs more of them. Yes, definitely, definitely. John's got it. What what the internet doesn't know is that John already has developed an AI program, but it only turns out dank memes. That's the only thing it does. So, <laughs> but you know, he John's the source of uh, every dank meme out there. That's the that's the secret of the Lion Share Marketing Podcast. But now that's <laughs> out. Let's get to our interview with Nate. Nate, welcome back to the Lion Share Marketing Podcast. Long overdue. Yes, after, yeah, uh, you you were a great guest the first time when you were running all the marketing over at Dugout Mugs, and now you're over at Original Grain Watches. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me back. Of course, of course. And the first thing we're going to do a Q4 deep dive today because I think that's relevant for a lot of our marketing leaders listening in. But first, uh, Nate, for it's also an interesting time in the job market right now, and I know a lot of people are looking that maybe didn't expect to be looking. So if you could share any advice with the marketing leaders listening in that may be looking for a new position right now, what would you tell them? Um, you got to start looking before you need to look. Um, that's something that I, I've learned uh, early and often in my young career. Um, whether your social media of choice is Twitter or LinkedIn, um, there's a lot of founders and CMOs out there um, that are more than willing to interact with you and get to know you and build relationships with you. Um, and that's something that uh, I did fairly well um, the last couple of years. Um, and to be honest, it was it was unintentional. Uh, I became a chief marketing officer at 24 years old um, and had a little bit of panic about like, oh, what am I doing? Like, how did I end up here? Like, yeah, I have a marketing degree, but I graduated with a 2.4 GPA. Like, uh, what's going on? Uh, So I like kind of out of uh, not desperation, but like just a feeling that I needed to learn. Um, sure. so I immediately followed every CMO and CEO I, I, I could and started learning a lot of things. And then, uh, January 14th of this year, after my last day at dugout, I, uh, I had left without a job lined up, uh, and I tweeted out that I needed a job. 
Um, and four hours later, I got a DM from the founder of a regional grain who didn't even follow me. Um, but like some of his followers liked my tweet. So he saw it. Um, and within 10 days, we, we had a deal. Um, so yeah, my advice would be start building relationships with people you might want to work for, uh, a lot sooner than you need to look for a new job. Yeah, for, no doubt. Uh, great advice there. Yeah. It's always better to build your network before you need it. 100%. Good advice, Nate. And, uh, let, let's j- shift to original grain. Now, uh, you guys make some pretty sick looking watches and you guys are obviously in the thick of it ahead of black Friday, cyber Monday. We're recording this a few days before Halloween. Mm-hmm. How are you guys approaching Black Friday and Cyber Monday this year? So for those of you who don't know, Original Grain uh, makes great gifts for guys. Um, we primarily sell watches made from unique reclaimed materials. Some of our best-selling collections are made from reclaimed whiskey and beer barrels, um, Taylor guitar tone wood, uh, ammo crates from the military. Um, so that's who we are, what we, we, we do. Um, we are very seasonal. Uh, we see a big spike for Father's Day in June, and we see a way bigger spike for Christmas in Q4. So really this whole year has just been a series of tests to get ready for Q4. So now we are headed into it. We know we're about to make, you know, just about half our revenue for the year in the next 50 days. Um, and we've no learned, <laughs> yeah, I know, trust me. It's, uh, it's always nerve wracking to get right about this time. Cause you're like, well, I think it's going to go well, but it could not go well. Um, but we've, you know, I, I identified here are our, you know, top 10 performing static image ad formats that we know we need to replicate across every product now because we've tested them. We know they they work. Um, here's our best offers that we've launched through email and SMS. So we're doing them again. Here's our best landing pages for from the year. So that's where we're, where, where we're sending all our, our traffic to. So um as I told my boss at the beginning of Q4, I'm the most confident I've ever been in my career with the things we can control. I'm the least confident in the things I can't control. Uh, you know, global recession, inflation, money's tight, Facebook ads are not what they used to be. Um, An AWS outage on Black Friday. No one speak that in existence. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we are very dialed in on the things we can control. Uh, and hopefully in 50 days, it's all going to work out. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's a, that's a great approach. So now I've got to ask, uh, in terms of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, obviously no marketer is truly off for those days, <laughs> right? But, yeah. but I, I'm curious, how, how much scoreboard watching are you doing versus just enjoying some drinks, turkey, and family time? Uh, I do a lot of, of work that week. Um, my family understands that as long as I work in e-com, uh, I'll see you at Christmas. Um, so me and the wife stay home. Uh, last year, she cooked a great turkey. This year, we're actually thinking about just ordering out um, a new barbecue spot opened up here. That's amazing. So we're just going to get trays of brisket and pulled pork and mac and cheese and, and go to town on it. Um but being uh, my first Black Friday with this brand, um, you know, I kind of have an idea of what to expect from the historical data we have. But I want to be fully available if, if anything goes wrong, if an email doesn't get sent out, if there's something with our site that that's not working. Um, I want to be the guy to, to, to find the problem and make sure it gets fixed quickly. Oh, what 100%. Because at the end of the day, it falls on the marketing leaders, right? And that happened to us, actually, it wasn't our, our fault or our client's fault, but one of our clients, a large chain of brick and mortar retailers, uh, in a couple of markets, the newspaper failed to put the inserts in mm-hmm. on Thanksgiving Day. And so here we are at 9 a.m. Pacific on Thanksgiving. It's like, hey, kids, watch the parade because we got Facebook ads to get together because we've got to do something to try and reclaim some of the CPMs that we just lost uh, mm-hmm. with these inserts not getting put in. So it worked out, but like that, it, it just... Th- that last minute stuff and those fires do have to get put out and they do happen. Yeah. And I've, uh, I- I've done a much better job this year uh, than I ever have in my career uh, about finding good separation from work. Um, but Black Friday is not the time to, to do that. 
Um, no. You know, like we've had like, you know, randomly in July, our website was down for two hours and it probably cost us five grand. If that happens on for an hour on Black Friday, it's going to cost us 40 grand. Um, so the stakes are just much higher. Um, so we're all going to be pretty locked in. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and I uh, completely understand on that side. And speaking of locked in, obviously, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is no longer a four day event. It's more like a 40 day event at this mm-hmm. point. And really, this year it kicked off a little bit differently with Amazon's second Prime Day. Did you guys participate in the second Prime Day? We did not. Uh, we sell a little bit on on Amazon, um, but it's it uh, hasn't been a focus for us yet. Uh, it will be next year. Uh, but with that said, we launched our first Black Friday ads a few days ago. Uh, you know, October twentieth. Um, we're announcing to our email and SMS list on Tuesday, November first, that Black Friday starts now. Um, you know, and some marketers will criticize that and say it's cheap, but uh, it's what we got to do. Um, you know, oh, and that's the game, right? Yeah. Like it, it's, it's studies have shown again, consumers are spending their Christmas dollars earlier and earlier every year. Mm-hmm. Like we don't, we don't have a choice. It's either get them now or you're not going to get them later. Yeah, and like no, no matter our opinions on it, uh, our customers, whether I send one or not, are going to get forty emails on Tuesday that say Black Friday to start now. So I might as well be one of them. Yeah, absolutely. So how are you working to stand out from the crowd with, with the Black Friday uh, ad messaging, right? Because like you just said, there are 40 other emails in their inbox with the same t- types of offers. So what what are you doing with original grain to stand out? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I need to give massive credit to Ryan and Andrew Beltran, the founders here. Um, the products that we have look absolutely incredible. They feel great. Um, I've never been a watch guy, but now I'll forever be a watch guy because every time I wear these out, I get a bunch of compliments on it. So uh, it's it's relatively easy. I'm starting with a great uh, collection of watches here um beyond that um black friday starts with all the new customers we've collected this year um so we've made sure that we're acquiring customers uh profitably and acquiring the right customers profitably um we've made a really strong effort this year to lean away from steep discounts um on the theory that those customers are going to be worth more to us down the road. Um, you know, when, when you're constantly shelling out 30, 40% off BOGO deals, um, you are attracting cheap customers um, and you're going to pay the price for that. Um, so we've made a really strong effort to lean away from discounts, lean more into bundles um, so that if you want to get a deal for us, you're going to buy more than one product and you're going to place an order that's higher than our AOV. Um, uh, getting into present day, um, we're launching new products in Q4, um, something that uh, Original Grain hasn't done a ton of historically. Um, we we just launched a line of pendants a couple weeks ago. They're necklaces um, that are much more uh, accessible than our watches. The watches range from two to five hundred bucks. The pendants are less than a hundred. Um, we're launching a, uh, watch with, uh, Yellowstone national park this week. Um, and depending on when this is going to air, you might be getting insider information, but we do have two new watches coming out with Buffalo trace bourbon, um, we, that we use their bourbon barrels, uh, to create our watches from. Um, so those are some, some big ones. It starts with the product, of course, uh, then it goes to all of the customers we've paid a lot of money to acquire this year. Um, but really just making sure that we have great new things to talk about from November 1st through December 20th. I love the Buffalo Trace collaboration. Uh, that was I, a I fun wanna, business trip. I can tell you that. I, I, I can imagine. Talk a little bit about the, the what goes into forming a strategic partnership with an iconic brand like that. Because – uh, I'm sure a lot of marketing leaders listening are like, Man, I'd love to do a collaboration with Buffalo Trace. And as you know, those collaborations don't grow on trees either. So what went into making that deal happen? It's, it is humbling and it's intimidating for for, for sure. Um, again, credit to Ryan and Andrew for the brand they built for the eight years before I got here. Um, that a brand as prestigious and historic as Buffalo Trace is willing to look at us and deem us worthy of being a partner. Um says a lot about our products uh, and the brand that we've built here. Um, when we 
uh, kind of uh, uh, evaluate partnerships. We know our whiskey barrel watches are some of our best sellers, um, and we've never attached it uh, to a big name like the, that. So um, as we uh, evaluated kind of all the distilleries out there, um, Buffalo Trace was at the top of our list, uh, and not just because it's my favorite bourbon, uh, but because they are, you know, the the oldest running distillery. They're the most awarded, um, widely regarded as, you know, some of the 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 best bourbon out there. Um, and that's and that's the type of brand we want of our uh, uh, align ourselves uh, alongside of. Um, now it uh, wasn't easy getting the deal done, but uh, we agreed on one that we were all ha happy with. Uh, it's been an absolute grind to prepare for this launch. Um, and uh, yeah, that's launching in eight days here. And I've been working on it all the day. Uh, you know, the, uh, the cool thing about working with brands like that is you get a glimpse into how they think about branding, right? They've been around for, you know, 250 years. Um, they have forecasts that go out 60 years into the future. Um, every project that they're finishing now was starting by a generation before them and every product uh, or, or, or project that they launched today, they won't be alive to see how it turned out. Um, so just really uh, wow. fascinating. Um, yeah. and, and we left that experience thinking, wow, nobody in e-com is building a brand like not the way that they are. Um, so it's uh, it's been quite the experience. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That, that's awesome, Nate. And yeah, so true. It is a completely different game that they're playing over there. And that's fantastic on that side of things. Uh, bringing it back to your Q4 strategy beyond launching new products, what channels do you feel are most effective for original grain right now? Facebook is still getting the majority of our budget. Um, as much as I wish it wasn't, uh, it, it might be half as good as it used to be, but it's still twice as good as the, the next best thing for us there's a country um, song in there somewhere yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely uh yeah it it well what is it? It, it i ain't as good as i once was but i'm whatever as good once as i ever was yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the zuckerberg theme song right now for yeah sure. uh, um so uh that is going to uh get most of our budget um we have google su uh supporting that uh, of course um, we'll spend a little bit of money on uh, TikTok. We'll spend a chunk of money on YouTube creators actually sponsoring their videos. Um, but yeah, we've we've tried all all year to find something as as scalable as Facebook is, and we keep failing at it. So for now, that is what it is. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and to to totally agree. Uh, specifically within Facebook and Instagram, what's working well for you on those channels? Is it UGC style content? Is it whitelisting influencers, video stills? What What do you feel is crushing it for you on those channels right now? Uh, close up, high res shots of our products. Um, stills, stills, static images are uh, mainly what we're running and are bringing in the vast majority of revenue. Um, it's very different than where we were at six months ago. Um, Father's Day, we leaned heavily on video. Um, and throughout Q3, statics performed way better for us. And we're going into Q4 with about 60 to 70% of our account is going to be static images. 30% is going to be videos. Um, and we're going to feed what whatever is working. But we're seeing cheaper CPMs on statics, cheaper clicks on statics uh, and a lot better return for what it's worth. We're seeing the same thing internally on our side. So yeah. that's, that's what the Fidelitas team yeah. is seeing as well. Yeah. Uh, anything interesting. Been, that you're, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say it, it's been so funny this year. I feel like I have so many conversations about media buying that 24 months ago would have made no sense. Um, yeah. But like the landscape has completely flipped. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to keep up with it, obviously. Um, but it hasn't been easy. Yeah. And it's an, it's an interesting time on that side of things. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, we talked about earlier, always be networking with media buying. It's always be testing, right? Cause while you and I are both very confident that that's working today, we have no guarantee that that's what's going to work next week, even. So, uh, the game continues to, to change, which in a way I'm grateful for it, it creates a need for, Shops like Fidelis exist. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
if it was that easy, founders would do it, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yep, exactly. So that no, that's that's great. Anything interesting that you're testing right now on on, on whether on paid media side or new channels or anything like that? Um, we're, we're we're trying to lean into our bundles as much as possible. Um, historically, we've had a tough time getting repeat purchasers. Um, you know, our our products are great, and we have a wide variety of them, um, but they're not cheap. Um, you can sell someone a four hundred dollar whiskey barrel watch once. Selling a different one to them again is hard. Um, so we're trying to kind of maximize LTV as soon as possible. And uh, the way we had success doing that in Q3 was promoting our bundles. Um, so we now also make wedding bands and necklaces out of the same uh, wood that our watches are made from. Um, so we're going to be running deals for buy a watch, get any piece of jewelry for 50 bucks, um, which, you know, they're usually priced between 100 and 200. It's a great deal. Um, still works well for us. We get two products out there. Our margins on it are are better than giving a 30 percent off deal. Um, so and I'll bet you over time the LTV is proven. I, I bet if you're shipping them two products out of the door and that's their first purchase with you. I'd be very confident in forecasting that they're more likely to be a repeat purchaser at that point anyways. You'll get them up for a second watch or something down the line for sure. Absolutely. I mean, everyone knows, or maybe everyone doesn't know, but you know, typically your Black Friday customers are going to be your least valuable um, because they're you know hunting for that 30, 40, 50 per percent off deal. Um, so we're trying to lean away from that as much as possible. Um, after November, you're still going to see 20% off site wide on our site, mainly because it's predictable. Um, we are fairly yeah. certain um, about how that's going to per perform, uh, but we're kind of doing this, this mini micro test within Q4 about let's see what our CPA is on bundles um, and see if we can kind of lean heavier into that uh, as opposed to discounts going forward. Yep, for sure. Yeah, 100%. And that, that's, a, that's a great piece of advice. I think a lot of marketing leaders forget that. You get so caught up in making sure that the cash register rings and you get the Shopify cha-ching on your phone during Black Friday that you, you forget like, oh, those guys may not come back next year, right? And figuring out like, hey, how do I calculate a realistic LTV on this? And what's my net profit really look like in return for these deep discounts? And on top of deep discounts, I'm spending the majority of my ad budget during this time as well. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of variables that, and what really I think you're talking about, Nate, is it's uh, marketing chess versus marketing checkers, right? And that's where I think marketing leaders need to level up their game or they're going to end up getting burnt. And those are the ones I don't think it necessarily catches up to them this quarter, but it definitely catches up to them in Q1 and Q2 on the backside. Yeah. And I think it's something that marketers need to realize is the game doesn't end on December 25th this year. Um, we got to do it all again next year. Um, so of course I could run super steep BOGO deals or 30 or 40% off and, you know, top line would probably look pretty good. Um, but that doesn't help me in Q1. That doesn't help me in Q3 of next year. Um, and that's really what we're focused on. Um, you know, it's uh, original grains got, you know, nine years of history. Now we're not looking at this year or next year in a bubble. We're looking at the next decade. Yeah. Um, we learned that from Buffalo Trace that so we should pick our heads up a little bit. Um, so a lot of marketers would advise against testing in Q4. I think it's going to be a great kind of apples to apples comparison of like, all right, we know buyer intent is high. We're going to be able to get a lot of data on, on, on this. Um, let's see what CPA and LTV shake out to be versus discounts or bundles. Um, and we can lean heavily into the winner for next year. Absolutely. And part of that too, you, that's one of the advantages of having this longer period is, you know, when, when back when Black Friday was a 24 hour event and then it became a 36 hour brick and mortar event and then it became an all weekend thing stretching into Cyber Monday, even at four days, that's darn near impossible from a testing standpoint for you to get real volume and to make intelligent adjustments off the early returns uh, versus now with 40 days. You got for forever and a day to test and optimize and adjust, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's definitely a lot more wiggle room on that side of things. With, with your marketing strategy in general, Nate, what do you feel like is keeping you up at night right now? What are you trying to figure out? <laughs> uh, RLTV. Um, it's not where it should be. It's not where it could be. Um, I think part of that uh, is going to come with uh, product diversification 
certification, uh, and and we have a ton of that in the, the chamber. Um, but we also don't ship anything that's poor quality. So new product creation takes time. Um, but we've got a lot of plans for that that will help. Um, but in the meantime, it's tough paying, you know, 100, 120 bucks, 140 bucks to acquire a customer. They buy once for an AOV of 280. And it's like, okay, that's good. But, but are they going to come back? Uh, repeat purchases are, are going to be the, the, the difference between a great Q4 and a terrible Q4. Um, so that's one thing we're putting a, a, a lot of energy and effort into is, uh, our email and SMS cadence and, and strategy. Um, because we we can't run this business on new customers alone. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I'll tell you, the the thing that kind of keeps popping up in my head is just figuring out ways to turn your one time customers into multiple time gift givers. Even mm -hmm. if they won't buy another OG watch for themselves, how do you convert them into? Okay, I'm an advocate for this brand. I wear my OG watch fairly regularly. What 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 triggers me to make that into a gift for those that I'm closest to? Be it you know, friends for graduation or father's day or whatever, right. Where they, where they start to give more products. I think that that's, that's the, that's the key to unlock. I think. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's been a failure of ours historically because a huge percentage of the customers on our email list are not the end user or wearer. they're the gift giver. Um, they're mainly, you know, the wives, the, the mothers of the men who wear our, our, products um so it doesn't do me a lot of good to email barbara and say hey we dropped a new whiskey barrel watch when she already bought her husband a whiskey barrel watch last year um so we've got uh inserts that are going to start go go going uh into the packages um that are going to incentivize uh the gift receiver to opt in to our sms and email uh list um, we think that should help with LTV um, because a, a lot of the, the, the gift buyers, they don't want to give a gift to the same guy from the same place twice. Um, so we're, we're, we're working on that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Lots of opportunity for sure. And uh, Nate, you knew you weren't getting out of here without answering this question. If you had to give one key takeaway for our marketers listening in, Oh, I thought you were going to say because the Yankees just embarrassed themselves. I thought that. Oh, I, was, I, I wasn't even going to troll you on that. I was okay, okay. okay. That. I, I, uh, you keep in mind, I'm, I'm a Cardinals fan, and we, we, you guys, technically lasted longer than we did. So yeah. I got no, uh, I, I got no baseball beef at the moment. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, what, 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 for for a key takeaway for our marketing ears listening in today, what would you tell them? Um. It's going to be a, a vague piece of advice, but it's one that's helped me out a lot th this year. Um, I spoke at a triple whale conference in, in Austin, um, and I was super honored to speak there because a lot of people in the audience are doing things bigger and better than I am. Um, but I came away from that conference with a little piece of encouragement that I was on the right track. I was doing all the right things, but I was crawling on that track. And in this economy, you cannot afford to do things at a jogging pace. You need to be sprinting. You need to be very aggressive in everything you're doing right now. Um, it's bloody out there. Uh, most Americans are struggling fi financially, and I'm worried about selling them a $400 watch that they don't need. Um, you, you need to understand that, and you need to understand that to get the results this year that you got 12 or 24 months ago, you got to be doing everything relentlessly um so my piece of advice would be go harder um there's smarter people than me that can give you better tactical advice but i can tell you just pick up the the, the pace and go full speed yeah nate no, don't sell yourself short i thought you gave plenty of great tactical advice today uh appreciate you coming back on the line share marketing podcast as always it's been a pleasure yes sir thank you for having me back i appreciate it and uh hopefully i get that third invite at some point yeah, well, 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 yeah, just keep networking. We'll see where you end up next. <laughs> yes, sir. Bring you back again. <laughs> Maybe it'll be your own company at that point. We'll see. Uh, on, on, a, on a rocket ship for sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, buy Nate stock. Uh, buy, buy, <laughs> buy, buy it on, on their eyes. So uh, appreciate you, sir. Thanks again for coming on. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, everybody. That wraps up episode 126 of the Lineshare Marketing Podcast. Thanks again to Nate for coming on. Make sure you check out Original Grain Watches and those new 
uh, Buffalo Trace reclaimed watches. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Uh, and uh, again, we'll be watching what they do uh, throughout the fourth quarter. So a uh, good chance to see a marketing leader execute their strategies and adjust in real time. So best of luck to Nate. Best of luck to all of you marketing leaders as you go on your own Q4 deep dives and uh, try to make the most out of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and everything in between. And just remember, when you need more marketing advice, you know exactly where to turn. Make sure you're subscribed to the Wide Share Marketing Podcast. Uh, remember, sharing is caring. We'd love it if you pass this on to a friend. And if you need marketing help yourself, Fidelitas.co is the place to go. So make sure you go check that out. And until next time, on behalf of the wizard and myself, cheers. You've been listening to the Lion Share Marketing Podcast, brought to you by Fidelitas.co. Get measurable results from a strategic partner because winners keep score.